If you're just joining us, welcome to our Tuesday webinar here on June 30th with Bulb. Our special guests today are Anya Schutz and Damer Van Werven from ICFIS Lyceum. And we're going to be talking about how to motivate your students to own their learning. While we're waiting, Anya and Damer, would you like to tell us a little bit about yourselves? Yes, of course. Um, well, I'm a teacher of Dutch in the Netherlands at a um, uh, pre-university school. Uh, we have quite a different system in the Netherlands than in um, America, in the United States, because we prepare our students from primary school till university, and that's just one school. Um, we have about 1200 students at our school and my role is uh, besides being a teacher to um, monitor the innovation process and keep it going so we can better our, uh, our teaching along the way. So I do that now for about three years in which I combine research with our everyday practice and uh, well we're going to talk about it later in uh, what results that gave us. And Damer? Yeah. <clears throat> Good uh, morning or evening or wherever you are. My name is Damer van Werve. I'm uh, 33 years old. I'm a history teacher at also at Echtes Lyceum in Driehuis in the Netherlands. And besides my work as a history teacher, I also teach a course called Global Studies. And I'm the coordinate, project coordinator for formative assessment. And so I work very closely together with Anya in yeah, implementing innovation and change um, to make our education uh, in our school the best as possible. That's fantastic. Thank you both. And I am seeing, I'm seeing a, many more people jumping on here. So, um, and I'm definitely seen a lot more responses to our question. So if you're just jumping on, we're, we're right at the top of the hour. We'd love for you to answer our poll before we get started. Yeah, and it's really interesting to see where, how people uh, look upon grades. What yeah. is the thought of them uh, on the yes. subject already? Yeah. I definitely look forward to hearing you guys share about reasons why you made the shift. I think that's um, something that is, is constantly in discussion about the reasons why, the reasons why not to, but never really coming to um, a comfortable space to make, that, to make that change. Yeah. Yeah. And I just got a question come in and I'm not sure if you all had seen that or not, but um, just so you do know, we are recording this as with yeah. all of our webinars. Once the recordings are done, we go ahead and wrap it all up and we send it out to you in a nice email with some additional resources and links. So you will be getting access to this as well if you'd like to share it with, with your team, with your school, with your um, districts, wherever afterwards. We, we would love for you to do that. And we'll make sure that you have the additional resources that go with it. All right, so we are at we're at 9.01, my time, I should say, since in the Netherlands, I believe it's just after five o'clock. Yes. yes, that's right. <laughs> Good. Well, I just want to welcome everybody. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Actually, I'm going to end our poll first. Let me end the poll. And I'm going to share our results. Hmm, interesting. So you should be able to see the results. Um, yes. On a scale of one to five, how reflection oriented is your campus? So what we're seeing here is about 42% is in the 50-50 focus on grades and reflection, which I think just even over the past five years, that's been a big shift from where education was. But we're still seeing mostly focused on grades. That's, um, that's a very close second. And what I like seeing here is that reflection is part of our everyday. And um, so I think you guys are in the right place. We are talking to all of these areas, where they were, where they've, why they did what they did and where they've come to that. So I'm gonna stop sharing and now I am gonna share my screen. Okay. So if you're just joining us, welcome. Welcome to our webinar, A Netherlands School Story, uh, as we have two very special guests here today with us, Anya Schutz and, and Damer van Werven. 
how to motivate students to own their learning. So if you're just joining us, welcome. We're gonna get started, but what I would love to do is just start with, again, um, Damer, I'm gonna have you go first. If you could just tell us a little bit about you, your background, um, and since I, I know you did share just recently, uh, what is your favorite thing about teaching? Oh, my favorite thing about, do uh, you want me just to tell something about myself again? Yes, yeah. And then, and okay, then. so I'm, and my name is Damer van Werpen. I'm uh, 33 years old, I uh, live in Amsterdam. I'm a history teacher at Ichthus Lyceum. And uh, um, I also teach global studies um, and I'm a project innovation uh, um, the manager, you can say that, uh, for formative assessment at our school. And what I love most about uh, teaching or about kids is the way they can surprise me with what they know or how they, uh, uh, how sometimes you tend to think them, of them as children, but actually they're young adults or grown ups. And that's what I really love. Thank you. And, and Anya, the same. Yes, of course, it's, it's great to be part of the growing up of children from uh, 11 till they are really, uh, well, young adults. And to be able to change the way they think, they, um, they learn how to be um, really a part of a community, to share with other people, with, uh, with teachers as well as uh, students, peers, and well, it's, it's really interesting. Um, I'm a teacher of Dutch and I think language is very important because it uh, helps you think about things, uh, form an opinion, um, really communi communicate with other people. So yeah, it's, it's great to be a part of that and see how children develop in that way from being, um, well, really dependent to become, um, eventually more um, self-aware uh, and uh, self-conscious people. Wonderful, thank you. And just um, before we get started, just a quick review of what we'll be talking about today with our two special guests. And I, <laughs> I keep calling it ichthus lyceum, but after hearing Damer say it, I know I'm saying it very wrong. <laughs> so I'm That's just okay. gonna let them speak to that. <laughs> but sure. in this webinar today with them, um, we're going to be talking about what they've created, professional learning community team, which I find very interesting. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that and how that got started and how they brought on digital portfolios, um, how digital portfolios has allowed educators to personalize curriculum um, such a key component to what you guys are doing and al allowing you that window into the students to be able to make the shift based upon their needs and where they're at in their learning. And then why their students think more critically around the process, how they learn more over time, and that they are more aware of their capabilities and their talents. Isn't that what it's all about, helping our students get to a place where they see how amazing they are and what they're capable of doing. So that's what we're gonna get to. And I would love to stop sharing my screen and get going, knowing that we've got, we've got, a, we've got a full audience now. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull up my questions. All right, if you're just joining us, welcome to the webinar today with Bulb and our special guests, Anya and Damer. And so to start off, I would love for you guys to just tell us about Ichthus Lyceum where are you guys located and what is your school known for? Thank you very much, uh, Michelle. It's a pleasure to, to be part of this uh, webinar and uh, hello all of you around, to, to all of you around the world. So, uh, Ichthus Lyceum um, is a high school. It's mean, we have a Dutch education system, so it's probably a bit different from, from the people that are listening in now, but basically it's a high school for kids between 11 and 18 years old. Now we have about 1200 students, um, which we uh, prepare for a college or university education. Uh, and we have a staff of about 120, depending on who you count as staff, um, of, of, of whom I think about 100 are teachers. Now we are located in a very small town called Driehuis, which is a 30 uh, minute commute from Amsterdam and the train stops right in front of the door, so that makes it really easy for me to get here. Um, 
And what we believe that our, our central mission is to, to create as much possibilities as possible for, for our kids to discover and develop their, their talents, for instance, in science, arts, or languages. Uh, but we're also, what we're also really keen on is to support children who, who have special educational needs. And this is about, I think, 10% uh, of our population. Um, and this is, includes children with uh, um, dyslexia or autism, any kids within the autism spectrum. Uh, and um, so we can also help uh, uh, support these kids when they eventually, and so they can stand on their own two legs, basically. Mm -hmm. So we're basically known for, um, I don't know, very, we're also a very warm school. So the kids, we feel there's a very close connection between teachers and kids. There's very, this is very informal. And this, I think, is what, uh, what's part of our, uh, our DNA, so to speak. Fantastic. And I didn't realize that, that your school also worked with students with special needs. And because that adds a whole other element to this now as well, knowing that um, personalization is already happening with those students. So then how does this translate to them? So I would love to go into number two, and I'm not sure who's going to answer this one, but I'm going to ask it. Tell us about your professional learning community, the PLC team. When was this team created and what is the purpose and role that it serves within your school? Well, um... We, we, we re realized at a certain point we had to change the way we teach and um, because we, we really wanted uh, to deep learning to take place and we wanted to meet uh, the special educational needs uh, and other needs for every student. So personalized learning was uh, and is important and deep learning and we felt at, a, uh, at that time we w didn't do that sufficiently. So we, um, students were really learning superficially. We had to change something. And we also know that teachers uh, don't like to be told what to do. So it's not something that you have an idea and you plant it in your school and everybody does that, especially not in the Netherlands. Maybe it's <laughs> different elsewhere, but we are <laughs> really, um, I think that's difficult universal. to change. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we encountered in the past lots of problems with imp implementing innovative solutions for enhancing student learning, like formative assessment or the use of technology. And um, we searched for a way to change things without uh, saying uh, bossing teachers like like that. So um, we felt we, we had to search for what makes uh, teachers tick. And we do know that uh, what makes teachers tick, what makes us all tick is to better the way we teach in order to get students to learn deeply and to really learn something and to become an independent creature. So uh, we created a team of teachers uh, consisting about uh, five teachers and that team has just one goal, stimulating learning in teachers and students by combining knowledge of research with the challenges teachers encounter in their everyday practice. For example, our teachers felt really bad about students learning superficially. So we provided them with information from research on how to stimulate deep learning. And the teachers developed a series of lessons uh, based on that knowledge, tried it out, and uh, evaluated together what the impact was. So in that way, teachers learn from each other and the classroom practice really changes. So uh, that's the, um, the core of a professional learning community as we see it. Teachers uh, learn from each other, change little things in their everyday practice, reflect on it and see what the results are. And we al always ask ourselves, what does the student notice of the things we have learned for ourselves as, as a teacher. So if we read an article, if we uh, are really interested in something, what does the student feel of that change in thought uh, of, of the teacher? That's fantastic. And actually hearing you say um, how you started with having teachers reflect 
Yeah. And now, yeah. And now, and now we go into this next question of, um, you know, the PLC team decided to start moving away from grades. So what, what were those conversations like? How did you come to that decision? Where does reflection play in that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, the reflection, as you say, started with, uh, with teachers. And when we were doing so, we asked uh, our teachers, if you could name something that you would want to change, what would it be? What is the main problem you experience in your everyday practice? And how should the practice look like in an ideal world? And then we started, well, we, we named the problem uh, A, the uh, situation, the ideal situation B, how do we get from A to B? So um, we, we really didn't have a, a, a big problem. Uh, our students got reasonable good grades, 96% uh, of our students passed the final exams. But students were kind of laid back and asking us, so what is the use of what we learned for our life? And we noticed in, in, a lack of interest in the content we teach. So students developed uh, a habit of learning a day before the test, which got them okay grades, but on the long run, a term didn't change the way they think, which learning should obviously do. So, um, Two weeks later, they completely forgot what they learned for the test. And we really wanted um, that, that change in the way they think and feel and act uh, to be permanent and not just to get good grades. And that's why we uh, started to focus on agency and ownership, because if you really want to uh, be uh, learning something, then deeper learning can take place. And in order to stimulate that, uh, you need to stimulate the mot motivation of children. So you have to give them autonomy. Uh, they mm -hmm. have to feel competent, of course. Um, they have to learn how to reflect themselves on how they are doing and what they want. So self-regulation skills are in order to uh, children setting their own goals, yeah. using strategies to reach them. And um, have to develop uh, uh, self-confidence for learning also. So that needs um, us to uh, give feedback to them on how they are doing and they need to self-reflect as well. So that was, uh, yeah. that was the, yeah, the idea. And that's why we, we thought, well, we don't want children just working for grades. We want them to work because learning is fun. We want them to create a mindset that learning is something you do your whole life. And we want to give them the skills to do so. And in yeah. order to do that, yeah, you have to be aware of what your interest is, uh, how you can ask questions, uh, find the answer to those questions, and then do something with that knowledge you uh, gained. Yeah, so if I could just um, make another point uh, as well. It's just a conversation about not having any grades is very, it's, it's sometimes can be very difficult because um, you're going into a more formative uh, way of, 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 of assessing where students, uh, where students stand. In a sense, we, we basically, we had some sort of a system in place in which we, at the end of each period, we, uh, we rated our students in terms of uh, the effort the uh, insight and their behavior. And we rated this with a, uh, this was uh, not up to standard or up to standard or very above standard. And this is something we did in hindsight. So we weren't really giving any formative information to our students on where they were standing during a period, only afterwards. So this is what we say in Dutch, um, mustard after the meal. Uh, this is a very, it's a saying, so it, it doesn't, it, so the students don't really, um, don't, uh, it's not very useful for students. But at the same time, uh, our colleagues also thought that this was useful to do it this in this way. So it really is about also convincing uh, colleagues what the uh, actual, uh, um, uh, of why you uh, why you want to um, have less grades and and what you do in uh, what what you're going to uh, put in 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 
in place of those grades. And I think that's a very much a, a conversation that you need to need to talk about because, um, you know, it, in, in the end, it concerns all colleagues. So sometimes this can be a difficult conversation, but I'm, 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 I have the feeling, Anya, correct me if I'm wrong, but that we're really going in a good way in, uh, when it comes to, to, to moving away from the grades. Well, and speaking to that, I know that that, so the PLC team and this decision started a couple of years ago, correct? Yeah. Yep. And so at some point here, there was a decision made around the use of bulb digital portfolios in this process to help students make that shift from grade oriented to reflection oriented. Can you tell us about that process? Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, uh, just uh, uh, Anya and me, we were already thinking about, uh, about, you know, we need some kind of a tool with we can, which we can uh, allow or enable our students to think about questions like, who am I? What are my talents? My desires? We want uh, our students to make their talents explicit, to make connections between different subjects and disciplines, um, to see a long-term development in learning, uh, to make well-founded decisions about exam uh, subjects or choices or, and, and further education and to save important uh, learning uh, experiences. But what, what, what we saw now, even you know, if you have a summative test, give it to a kid. And even if a student has a, like, an eight out of 10, he would make a, you know, he would just throw it, throw it in the bin. And that was, uh, that, that, that's so, so heartbreaking. So we yeah. were, looking for something where we could you know try to 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 make students reflect on uh, on, on on the questions i just uh, the, i just uh, described and then in 2018 we got the opportunity to go to bed london which i really recommend to any educator very inspiring to go to a place where um technology and education uh really are, are at the are at the center and uh, we actually ran into the bulb stand and we talked to uh, John Scanlon, who is the, I think, uh, manager for bulb. And uh, when, when they showed us uh, what bulb is and how it works, we were, we were sold immediately, actually. And so uh, we are really lucky for, um, to, to, uh, to, 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 uh, um, really lucky to to have or establish contact basically and then we just said hey we'd like to do a trial for our all of our students and and john or bob was like hey okay this is cool let's do it from school from the netherlands and um so basically that's when we started uh, working together and um um and now we're in a process uh where we are trying to uh work uh, more and more uh, with bulb, but this is not something that is uh, done easily. It's not. It's. It's. I mean, uh, we ha we have it, but that doesn't mean that every teacher actually um, uh, sees sees the added value. And I think there's uh, we have some some groundwork to we have still have some work to do when it comes to that, uh, and not only for a t for our teachers, but sometimes also for our students. I mean, you have to really explain why did, do they need to fill in this portfolio? Why do we think it's important? Mm -hmm. And I think there's also, that's also very important to, to, to think about when you're, uh, um, when you're going to use bulb and, and, and shift from grade oriented to, to reflection oriented. You need to take, yeah. you take that in, into the conversation as well. Yeah. At first, we we also uh, also had a conversation about how to use a portfolio. Do we use it to assess learning, the, so assessment of learning or assessment for learning? And um, we decided to do it both ways uh, for now, mm -hmm. because obviously assessment for learning is is the most important. You want uh, that children can learn from reflection and better themselves and make uh, their best work uh, part of their portfolio and, and see how they grow. Um, but we uh, also gave a grade after a full year of um, uh, using the portfolio in a summative way because um, all of our colleagues are uh, working summative 
So we felt that we had to make it a really important so, uh, with, with a grade you say, well, we, we think this is important. And um, as our school is not completely without grades, but uh, moving towards working without grades, we felt that this was uh, a good step ahead. So I was really moved because I just finished listening to all the reflections. It, it's really great that in BULB uh, students can not only share their uh, uh, type work, but also uh, film, audio, uh, pictures. Mm -hmm. And I listened to a lot of audio uh, of children uh, reflecting on this year of uh, learning Dutch. And it was really moving to hear them speak about their challenges, how they overcome them and what they are really proud of. And most students really thank me for introducing this to them. And they were really proud to look back now. And normally that would, all their work would be gone. Yeah. And now it's really uh, kept well and, and they are so proud. And well, I was very moved by it. Yeah. They're seeing their growth. They're actually seeing yeah. it in real time. Yeah. It's, it's not a piece of paper, like you said, Damer, that's just crumpled up and tossed when it's done. It's something that's living and it's showing their progression and improvement and telling them yeah. that they can do it. Yeah. And when you yeah. actually ask kids to reflect on their learning, uh, I have the same experience as Anya. They really appreciate it. And I, there was this one student who said, hey, uh, uh, this is a final question of the of the of, of the reflection. I, I asked them to to turn in, and so I says uh, uh, the question was, uh, "What do you think about this assignment?" And and the and students said, "I really loved it. I would have, uh, you know, why are we doing this now? I would have done this um, uh, way more often than I did." And I think that is a very important uh, signal that we we as teachers need to do something. With. Because we need to talk, we need to talk about their progress. We need to talk about their talents. And once you ask a kid, "What are your talents?" Then I mean, um, uh, that's a start, and make them reflect. And that's where I think why Bob is so is so wonderful. It's not a thing of me, of a teacher. It's 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 yours, and it's it's your place where you can have uh, where you can share your your learning experiences. Right. It's become, it's become part of their practice and it's something now that's, that they're just used to doing and it's, and it's part of learning. And so, so hearing you actually, um, I had heard you say, Damer, that there were some challenges and that you are still, you know, dealing with educators who may not get the value yet. Um, I'm curious in this past year that you've been doing this, uh, what did you do to address some of those challenges and what have you found has worked well to start to move teachers in a different direction? So really, I think, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. I think, is it for for me or for you? Uh, it's for yeah. either, and and so either. I say, just start, start Amor. I I feel okay. In where if needed. you can fill in, uh, so I think it's really important to have a conversation, as Anya was telling, uh, um, also informing our professional learning community. It's really about explaining to people why are we doing this why is this part of our mission what is like what do students what is what is the wish of students why do, what the students want more of and so if you really listen to all of those things and as a teacher i don't believe you can say that this is uh that you're that it's useless or you can't uh, you know uh, so i think that's one way to do it is to um really uh you know uh really talk to people who are uh, who aren't as enthusiastic uh, but another thing is that I mean you guys give awesome uh, trainings uh, uh, I mean uh, from, from web-based training so training is a part of it as well um, and also what I thought was really amazing was that uh, I, I literally asked uh, you know Bob was in English and I asked uh, hoping that I uh, that, that it would be possible but I said to John, like the manager at Bob, would it be possible if, if it's also available in Dutch? And actually he made that happen. And so I'm so excited uh, that actually you guys listen to our, our needs and um, that, that also helps us to, to, uh, to, to uh, overcome the barriers we ha here, have here at home. 
Yes, uh, indeed. And, and not only with teachers, but also with uh, children, it was uh, a process of getting used to it. And at first we thought we made this process really easy for children to create a format on beforehand. Uh, so that children would only have to add their own work in that format. But we discovered that it didn't work for the children. They constantly came up with questions like, how do I fill in this format? And what to do with work that didn't fit the format we thought would be uh, appropriate. So we understood we needed to give them more autonomy on how to create their pages and, and, yeah. and make this a creative process. And amazingly so, by doing that, uh, the questions stopped immediately and students became owner of their own portfolio, wanting to share with us the best of their work and their re reflections on that learning process. So in that, uh, by listening to our students, we've, we learned also to not um, make all the decisions for them on how to fill that portfolio, but give them really a chance to um, uh, use their own creativity. So and that, a lot yeah. Of, yeah. Sorry, I was just going to say that I find that really interesting because I think a lot of times when you look at digital portfolios and just all that's available out there, oftentimes it is so teacher led yeah. and instructed that there isn't the opportunity to allow creativity and for that student to be able to demonstrate their learning however they choose to. And so yeah. opening that door and allowing them some freedom and then continued yeah. more and more freedom to be able to showcase really who they are and what they're about. Yeah, and amazingly, children do better when you give them freedom. Right. Because we are teachers, we, we, we think that uh, they will do less if we don't say, well, this is what you should do. But in fact, they are doing more. So that was really great to see. And um, what also was very uh, helpful, we, we evaluated the use of Gulp also with children. And first we, we created a group um, so that children could see uh, their work and other, uh, work of their peers immediately. But that uh, didn't feel comfortable for them immediately. So we also learned that it, it's better to have the children decide with whom she want, they want to share their portfolio mm -hmm. with. Of course, with a teacher, that's obvious because they, they have to be able to give feedback. But um, furthermore, the, the peers, that, that should grow. They, f they felt uncomfortable in the beginning and later they became prouder and prouder. And then they began to share with their parents, with their uh, peers as well. That's fantastic. So, so hearing all of this, knowing that you've been through your year and you're starting to hear these great stories and reflections coming out of your own students and you're coming in <laughs> to this new school year, um, which reminds me, you guys just finished, correct? It was um, end yes. of June? Yeah, end of June. Yeah. So when do you head back to school? So we head back, back to school on the 17th of August, and we are now in the final week, actually, of, of this uh, school year. So what we're doing now is we're preparing for next year. And uh, part of that pre preparation is, is to, uh, uh, for, for people also to, to, to think about how are you going to let your students reflect on their learning. And um, uh, because that is our plan moving forward with the portfolios, actually that our uh, form teachers, and now this is, uh, 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 and we want to make another step. You have to see it as Anya just said, I really totally agree. It's just, this is a process. Do not expect that, uh, you know, you have it, uh, you have bulb and then the next day you implement it and everybody knows how right. to work. And then next week you're, you're done. Uh, this is a process. Um, and so what we want to, what we want to achieve is that we want our, uh, students to reflect every period on their own on their learning and together with their form teacher so now every or twice a year you meet the parents uh, the student and the form teachers they meet in a conversation and usually that conversation is led by me the form teacher saying hey uh, Hans uh, you didn't really do a good job uh, did you in, uh, in math uh, what are you going to do about it 
So instead of having that conversation, we're going to we're going to ask kids to uh, to lead the conversation themselves, and we want Bob to play a part in that, play play, play a part of that in their in terms of their preparation. Uh, and and reflect before they have the conversation and that we can also as a form teacher uh, you are informed literally about what how your kids are doing and how they are developing and you are not um, the the wise uh, or the sage on the stage and saying yeah mm-hmm. we should do it should do it but you are your 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 role shifts from the sage on the stage to more to the coach uh, on the side and I think that's that's uh that's where we want to uh uh uh, move ahead in next in for for next year that's so we we have more subjects uh using bulb like um, uh, english french science and so on and um my own uh, subject uh, dutch we felt we had to lower the number of grades we give So we go from um, 10 grades to four grades a year. And beside that, we give formative feedback, uh, which they can use to uh, enhance their learning. Um, We are thinking about working with batches instead of grades, but uh, that's something we need to um, examine a bit more. Excellent. Uh, So so hearing you talk about those plans for this coming year uh, and knowing what what spring brought us around the globe. Um, how did COVID-19 impact your implementation plan during that year of implementing BOLD and now looking forward? How do, you, how do you see this helping? Or is it something that you're lessening or kicking up because of what's been going on? Well, um, obviously for the implementation of BOLD, uh, um, yeah, it was on the one hand, there's a bit of a setback uh, because we weren't able to see our, our colleagues in person. Uh, but on the other hand, COVID-19, uh, you know, in Chinese, there's two characters for crisis. A crisis is an opportunity and a risk. And so I think we had a lot of opportunities uh, that, that we've seen because a lot of our teachers, they actually um, became really um, familiar with uh, programs like uh, Google Doc and other IT, uh, uh, Google um, uh, G Suite and other, other programs that they use. So I think the, the, um, the step to using and, and bulb more often is going to be uh, less big than it was before. And what we actually are seeing now is that uh, during, uh, during our intelligent lockdown, uh, as our prime minister calls it, uh, 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 working with Bob doubled and um, and also uh, created an urgency to do so because uh, we need to we needed to see other ways in which uh, students progressed because if you can't see them in the classroom then how are they go- how are you, you know, going to uh, keep an eye on uh, and keep track of what they're uh, learning and how they've progressed if you don't have the opportunity to give tests. And um, what worked really well is that uh, all the G Suite apps actually combine really well in uh, in Bulb. So that's uh, that was also uh, uh, very helpful. And so um, um, uh, yeah, I think I'm really optimistic about what we can do uh, with uh, with Bulb because uh, I think uh, COVID nineteen has opened a lot of eyes. Uh, uh, at least yeah. uh, when it comes to using technology. And uh, Anya, do you have anything uh, to, to oh, add? I can only say uh, the use of technology uh, doubled and the use of bubble, uh, bulb doubled in, uh, during the crisis. So yeah, it's, it's a great way of, of, of showing how you progress without uh, doing a formal test. Learning yeah. continues. Learning yeah, yeah. continues, and that was really that was really critical. It was was center to to our policy uh, when it came to you know, uh, because a lot of uh, schools here in the Netherlands they just said like, hey, we can't see our kids. How are we going to solve this? Okay, we're going to put up cameras in the classroom, and we're going to just stream all of our lessons. And this uh, we we noticed and we heard that this caused all kinds you know probably has advantages, but there are, we think there are more disadvantages to, in, 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 to teach like that. Uh, and 
um, there are students uh, or there are schools where, where tests were still being given. And what we really were, was central to our approach was we want to keep learning going and we want to give feedback to our, our, our students. And, um, and I think, uh, uh, and, and so that has also helped a lot in moving away from grades because we're not, there is no opportunity to give grades and yet we have to decide if students pass or fail a year. So I think this also really helped open eyes that there are other ways than grades to uh, be informed of where your uh, uh, learners are in terms of their knowledge, in terms of their development. You could still assess. You could still see yes. where they're at, actually, their growth. Actually, yeah. more so. But what I was personally worried about is that I would lose my uh, lose touch of of my of my students and actually not see them. Whereas the opposite happened by having uh, uh, by using a bulb and Google Classroom. Uh, I actually learned more about my students than I did before in a busy classroom. Wow. Very interesting. This, so, so this actually brings me to the end of my questions. Um, I know that I've got a Q&A planned here. So this is, uh, I, I would love before we go into Q&A, if, if, if you would both pull up your portfolios and share with us a little bit about who you are within your portfolio, how you use it. Uh, we will definitely be sharing out their portfolio links so that you can access them and so that you can see the work that they're doing. They have made them public. And then yes. as you have questions, I will share my start screen. putting them in. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I will share, uh, share my screen first. Um, and um, my portfolio is uh, public, so everyone ca can see it later. And you are quite welcome to use the, um, the formats I planted there. I translated most of them, so you can use it uh, in other countries as well. Oh, you're wonderful. Uh, this is... <laughs> this is my uh, portfolio, which I use as uh, as a format. And um, as you can see, first we uh, created uh, collections for our students of Dutch, and these collections for year one, year two, up to year, to year six. And within that uh, collection, they are free to create their own page. Here you see that uh, first I created all kinds of formats and as I said before that didn't work so well. So now we can have them uh, create their own page and what is really wonderful, I saw a question already uh, from someone uh, from Mexico, is this uh, uh, usable for really small children? Uh, yes it is, especially if you have a touch screen but also with, uh, with a mouse no problem. If you start clicking on the page you created, you see the, and now it's in Dutch, of course, so I'll, <laughs> I see you can add a video, a picture, a file, audio, or a link to a URL you created. And, and young children can easily uh, make a picture and then um, plant it on their portfolio screen or draw a picture and have their parents planted here if they are really, really young. But this is, uh, this is an easy way to work. So um, now we have children create their own portfolio here. And I'm able to comment uh, on the bottom of, of the page and say, uh, for example, well done. And uh, post and the, the, the student will receive an email and uh, notice that there, there is some feedback to the process. Um, beside that, I created some uh, reflection formats. Go back to my page. And I created my, I, I, I collect my instruction videos here which I share with students, uh, especially during online, during the COVID period. And well, here are some of my teachings, which I share with them in uh, Bulb as well. And then they come prepared to class or, well, if we don't have class, they come prepared to the assignment I give them. 
Um, I created a checkout after a lesson, which it can be used online or also in class. Uh, Mention three things you learned today, list two things you found very interesting and that you want, would like to learn more about and what question do you have. And by sharing this checkout after a lesson with me, I am well prepared for the next lesson because I know exactly what children really evaluated and what they want to learn more of, what question they, uh, they still have. Um, yeah. That's fantastic. Thank you for Last walking. One. Yeah. That. Yes. And this is Go ahead and share well, some of the reflection we, uh, we give. So that's my so, uh, portfolio. Thank you. Okay, I'll, sh I'll share mine now. It's, uh, let me see. And while Damer's doing that, Anya, um, someone is replying that they're not able to see it. I don't know. So it sounds like they could see it on the screen. I just want to make yes. sure that it is public. But can you? Yes, see it is. It, it is public. It uh, is. Okay. I tried with a colleague. So, well, yes, we're seeing your. Screen you have now. to check. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah? Yes. Um, yeah. So okay. So this is um, this is a. Uh, collection I made for my global studies portfolio and uh, for instance what I uh, I'm really was I was what where I was keen on was to um, uh, uh, let students reflect on the whole school year and one of the things we so these are just some of the things that we um, that we uh, uh, that we did during some of the things that we talked about mm -hmm. and what I really like what uh, what Anya um, uh, already demonstrated is that it's really easy for kids to, um, you know, to add in uh, a video or an audio file, and so it's really easy for kids to just copy this, uh, copy this um, template, and then they'll have all the uh, questions they need to have, they need to answer, and that they can easily. Um, uh, 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 put in a, 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 a video or an audio file. And now this is, uh, I think this is, for me, this is really the power of, of, of Bulb is, um, is, is, is reflection. And what I also like is that because it was quite a while ago that we uh, talked about pitching uh, and, and presenting, that I was also able to, to insert uh, some of the classroom material that we that we uh, that uh, that that I used, and so for the kids who were actually, you know, ten for oh, it's a long time ago. I'm just going to see through the uh, through the Google slide again and, and freshen uh, up my memory. And um, as I was also, uh, as Anya was also telling, there are a lot of things. Um, I also was experimenting, for instance, with uh, 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 templates for learning years, for for instance, for for history, uh, that that kids could just copy. So these are empty, and kids can just copy them to their own to their own uh, um, uh, portfolio, and then they can fill them themselves themselves. Because I, as Anya said, I also really believe in autonomy, and this brings about the best. Uh, results mm -hmm. uh, um, because the more you say uh, uh, or, or the more uh, the more you yeah that's actually what I want to say give kids freedom and they'll come up with amazing amazing things they go above so and you, beyond right they, they don't just above. do the assignment they take it to something else and they yeah they and I'll also I'll also uh, I think I don't know where my um, account is open for everyone but i'll do that so people can can take a look themselves okay thank you thank you both that's fantastic and so um yeah great portfolios i agree with you julio <laughs> thank you um and oh and thank you chelsea she just shared anya's portfolio out so rocio i know you have asked about that specifically um and i know that there was a question in chat around whether or not bulb or digital portfolios works for, for younger children and yes to follow up with what anya was saying as long as a student's able to access technology and use technology, be it touchscreen or you know on a tablet or with a mouse, uh, they can absolutely use Bulb. We've got we have examples in our resource center of kindergartners up through college all using digital portfolios, 
It's just getting them started. And I think, again, like we talked about earlier, it's a process. So what's doable for a kindergartner um, or a first year student versus what's expected and doable for someone who is in a secondary or a high school level. And you just take them through that process. So I'm gonna start with a question that's come in from Rebecca. And it's, how are the assessments used for standardized university application? So how, how does this translate? That's, I, I think that's a big question that people want to figure out and get answered. Yeah. Well, um, in order to be accepted at a university, uh, you need to have two, th two things. Uh, first of all, um, you have to pass a, a state exam. So your grades of the state exam really counts for being able to uh, join university here. So this, this is the one grade we will never be able to get rid of. Uh, during the process from year one to six, we can. And if children really learn, we are very confident that they make uh, great exams, but the state exam, that is uh, something all children are obliged to do. Beside that, they, uh, most um, universities ask uh, nowadays for a portfolio or something uh, which children can show their career, their, their um, high school career, and especially what have they done for the community of their school. Uh, for example, have they um, set a, a, did a special master class or did they uh, contribute in certain ways? Uh, in making decisions for the school, uh, did they uh, sit on, on, the, on the school, uh, the student board, uh, that kind of thing. So they present and, uh, their work and now we ask them to uh, collect all these evidences in bulk so they can easily share it with the university uh, in order to be accepted there. So are your students um... Are, are all of your students making their portfolios public or is it for a certain age that you allow them to be able to share that out? Are they just sharing the private links? What is your policies on how they Good share? Good question. It? Yes, we, we keep them private as long as possible, but um, when, they, um, when, they, when they are in the highest grade, we allow them to uh, share it with others. Yeah. And uh, well, they Out, share it with their outside. parents, but yeah. others outside, outside. Our, our school. Yeah. 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 So for for everyone, uh, um, we allow students to share it within our organization. I think this is also been something that makes Bob uh, really, um, really great. Uh, you know, everything, what kids do uh, and put in their portfolio isn't for everyone to see. Uh, it's, it, is, it is controlled and controlled by students themselves. So I think that's a really important thing too, yeah. why we chose We had co quite a discussion as well. Uh, should children be obliged to um, take a picture of themselves on that portfolio? For teachers, that's really helpful because you have the student face, but we felt we couldn't really ask that from students. If they don't want to share their picture, well, that's okay. Um, right. It's yeah. their portfolio. Mm -hmm. That's it's part of that portfolio. ownership. Yeah. 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 It makes total sense. Any other questions out there? I'm looking at chat just in case I missed something. And thank you, Bria, for responding as well about the younger children. Yeah, just right. one more. I was thinking, I'm still thinking about the question. And um, mm -hmm. I think it's just so important. For, uh, and nowadays, if you talk about talent and talent development and and, and kids go from, uh, you know, they, they go, uh, yesterday we had our graduation ceremony and there were a lot of kids who were literally going to university or college. And I would be so ashamed if literally, if, if people after six years of high school cannot tell others what their talents are, that would just be a waste of, 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 of six years of education. So I think Bob can really help to start that and enhance the conversation and enhance your self-knowledge about these things. And I think that's crucial in your uh, further education, whether it's college or university or whatever. Mm -hmm. 
Well, and, and so from the U.S. side of things as well, what we're seeing is more interest and desire to have a portfolio, knowing that they're going to apply for an admissions program into, into schools, or if it's for um, an internship or a summer opportunity. There's so many different ways that they can share out that information. And actually, yeah. I'm, seeing, I'm seeing a question here from Eric, who is asking about uh, when it comes to privacy and restrictions while uploading content, how reliable is it? I'm not totally sure I, I follow that, Eric, but what I can tell you is that when the content is uploaded, it's, it's owned, it's living in that individual's library, and then as they share it, it's visible to those who it's shared to, and then if they choose to make it a template, that's where then that all of the content that lives there is now duplicated and brought into the other's library. So for example, whenever Anya and Damer send out their templates, correct? Um, if, if you've put an image or a video within that template, that will carry over into the student's library as well, that they can then use, remove, or do as they please with the content that's in there. But it still remains secure and private based upon, the, based upon security restrictions that have been agreed upon by the school. I think I answered that one, I will call it done. <laughs> All right, any other questions? I know we are, we're getting close to the end of the hour. Oh, and I see Bria commenting and I'm gonna read that loud because I so agree. Anya and Damer, what a great message to share. Um, how you use reflection to deepen learning is very inspiring. And um, there is a great bulb and Google Classroom help page for those of you guys. It's been a hot topic definitely um, in this past just four months. People are looking at how do you combine those two together. And um, so I'm just going to, since I know that we're, we're coming to the end before we close, I wanted to follow up with the both of you. Is there anything else that you guys would like to share with us before, before we call it an end? Yeah, well, maybe it's good to know uh, because of the former question that a, a student can't share um, a document that it's not really owned by him or herself. So if, for example, I created a document and I have the rights uh, of that document um, and allow children to see it, mm -hmm. they can't use it in their own uh, portfolio unless I want them to. So and right. it, the same goes for students as well. So they can't use each other's uh, documents. So for example, Google, Google Docs, because the restrictions in the docs uh, is also the restriction in bulb. It's a great way to share content, but it's still protected. Yeah. And I think that that's crucial, yeah. and especially when it comes to education and just thinking about the, the amount of content that students are pulling in from research, from there's copyright issues and there's things that want to be, that, that just need to be protected and respected when you're sharing out content and that, and that yeah. you're able to also give that information um, credit. Yeah. Yes. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen one more time. Um, I, I just wanna start by thanking the both of you so much for this, um, such, a, such a timely topic. Um, still, still very progressive, I think, for a lot of schools worldwide, but it's definitely something that is being brought to the forefront. I, and again, I think even more so because of what we're dealing with right now and just the way that education is shifting and moving and having to evolve because of the realities that we're facing right now. Um, so, so thank you both for taking the time to do this. We also have a really You're great paper, uh, a success story about their work that you can read uh, that goes into more detail and we'll make sure that that's also shared. And uh, we're working on getting translation, but there was a national article done in Netherlands about them and their school. And so we would love to be able to also share that out. And once, once we have that, we'll make sure to get the, to make that available. And with that, I, I just want to make sure that you guys are aware next Tuesday, we are starting our Summer Learn Fest. So if you're interested in joining us, register for that. It's not too late. It's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays in the mornings. And we'll, be, we'll actually be showing you how to integrate Google Classroom, um, pulling in some other apps, very popular apps like Padlet, and just a lot of fun learning. It's not going to be overwhelming. And uh, you're going to walk away with more more opportunities to engage with Bulb and to have your students use many different 
apps that are available within education for your students. So if you haven't registered for that, uh, be, be on the lookout because we'll be sending out the invite tomorrow. And thank you all for joining us and we'll, we'll be seeing you again soon. Our last webinar for July, um, is scheduled for July after our, our Summer Learn Fest. Sure. Great. Well, thank you very much for having us. If there's anyone out there who feels uh, uh, they, that they would like to get in touch with either me or Anya, um, that's totally fine. Um, Please feel free. We are really happy to share and it's really uh, very heartwarming to see how, uh, how many teachers are uh, thinking about getting students to, to have more ownership of their learning. Mm -hmm. So yeah. agree. Thank you both so much. And um, I'm You're welcome. Thank to you. the speakers. I would agree, Julio. Thank you so much. Have a have a wonderful evening and a wonderful rest of your day to all of you on the on the western side of the hemisphere. <laughs> Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you. All right. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.